Hi guys, this is Adam again. Um, I am just sitting in my room in the dark, studying, answering all of you guys' emails. I'm very busy, but I care too much about you guys to let you hang out in the dry. So um, I will be here for the next 15 minutes answering some of you guys' important questions. So where should we start? I got an email, um, several emails, asking about question, uh, chapter 7, question 14. You guys don't remember chapter 7 is the chapter that talks about recombination, gene mapping, gene frequency, and all that good stuff. So we are starting with this one. This is actually a um, pretty hard problem, I would say. I read it, got a little bit confused, but me being the genius tutor that I am, went straight to the answers and uh, found out how to do it. However, reading the answers, they were a little bit confusing, so I thought I would... Uh, share them with you, right? Explain the answers just so everybody has a better grasp of what was going on here. Reading the uh, question, if uh, this, uh, as my last recording, the resolution was a little bit bad, so I'm not going to take any chances. I'm just going to read it out for you guys. Bacterial cells of genotype per minus pro plus his plus were transduced with bacteriophage grown on bacteria in genotype per plus pro minus his minus. So you guys notice the starting genotype is the exact opposite as the transducing genotype, yes? And it's important to know that it starts out all as per minus and pro plus and his plus. And we're trying to get these to be minus and trying to get this one to be plus. Sorry. And um, the thing is now that transducents containing per plus were selected. So maybe this is the only thing that they could select for, but what they did was they killed off all the per minuses, kept only the per plus, and then gave you the results right here. So if you guys were confused about why you don't see three of them here, it's because you can just imagine putting a per plus, per plus, per plus, and per plus right here. And these are the resulting other phenotypes. Genotypes, I'm sorry. So here are the numbers, and they're asking for the gene order. So you don't necessarily know if this is the gene order, but we can uh, do a little bit of logic to figure this out. Now the way the book does it, and I would agree the best way to do this, is process of elimination. Okay, So I have put here, I'm going to make this a little bit smaller so you guys can see this side by side. Alright, we have per pro his and per his pro. Right now, I just took what I thought right here, per and per. I put them at the beginning and then flipped pro and his. These are This is definitely a possibility, right? We're just going to list out the possibilities. And then I have right here, his per pro. Now, this also covers pro per his because if they're flip-flopped, it doesn't matter. That means they're still in the same order. Okay? But the main part is that per is in the middle. That is what we mainly want to try to, we either want to prove that per is in the front or per is in the middle, and that's going to lead us to our answer, okay? So how we do this, bear with me, I know this is a little bit confusing, but we take this, and we're going to work on this one first. So, okay, we'll write out here that this all start out with minus, plus, plus. And if they recombine, we will see plus, minus, minus, if they all recombine, right? Good. So if you guys are with me so far, we'll just go through this together. All right. So if per was in the front, that would mean that any his minus should be pro minus. Is that right? Because as this thing is coming down, right, you are transferring over genes as one, two, three. I'll start using a different color now. Let's see, where's my colors? Colors. Just so you guys don't get confused. So you guys don't get confused. But um, right here, as you're transducing per, then pro, then his, any his minuses should be pro minus, right? Because you can't just skip over pro. Remember my flyer analysis, you have to hand out A, then B, then C. So let's look and see if this is true. We have our his minuses here, and in fact, there are even more pro minuses with the his minus. So this is definitely ruled out because 
you cannot have his min according to this theory, you cannot have his minus with a pro plus. But this is what we see, so this is wrong. Eh. Cool. So let's go to the next one. Per his pro. Let's think the same logic. If we have a per plus and a pro minus, all of the pro minuses that we see should be his minus, right? Because to get all the way to pro, you need to transform his as well. So look here, pro minus is here and here. And what we see is that they are, um, they are very few, right, compared to the pro plus. So that's good because pro is at the end, we expect less. But the problem is, is that we see more pro minus his plus than pro minus his minus. In fact, this is the least. So this does not bode well for this one because we expected all of the pro minuses that occurred should be his minus. But that is not what we see. So this is crossed off. Which leaves only this. You know what? I'm going to change my color so it's green. Good. This is green to go. This is your answer. His per pro or pro per his. It doesn't matter which order as long as the middle gene is correct. And this means that um, I put it this way because any recombinations you see are um, most of them will be his. Uh, what is it? Most of them will be his uh, minus because you're only selecting for per plus. Okay? So his minus and per plus, and that is actually what we see. We see a lot of his minus right here. See his minuses. Oops, I lost my page. All right, so his minus. So this is definitely the answer because we ruled out both of those. I hope that was a little bit clearer. If you guys don't understand this, um, just try your best to keep reading it over and over again. But um, this is a very hard question, so you guys have to understand that. Okay, now let's move on to the next question that I got. I got another question on 711. Here at HFR strain transfers genes A, B, C to an A minus B minus C minus. Okay, and it asks, do all B plus recombinants receive an A plus allele? Yes, yes they do. Remember my flyers. Um, to get B plus, to get the B flyer, you need to get the A flyer first. You can't bypass that step. So all B pluses, all B plus recombinants do receive an A plus allele. Here's the second question. Are all B pluses also A plus? This is no, okay? I don't think I went over this in class enough, but I'm going to go over it again because when you guys are cramming, the best things are that stick are the ones that get, make a memory. So I'm going to say that this is not true, and hopefully that will stick in your head because I'm a very important person and I'm your best friend, and you're going to remember everything that I say. Okay, so why? Why are not all the B plus recombinants also A plus? Well, remember how I told you? I'm going to draw this. Uh, let's see if I can get an eraser. Where's my tools? Tools, eraser. Oh, that sucks. Okay, well, I'm just going to move over to some blank space. Okay. I'm going to go back to black, too. Okay, remember that if I have here, and I have this little gene that's like A, B, such, 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 blah, 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 dot, dot, dot. And here is an F minus, right? And this guy is transducing the gene. If this is the chromosome with um, with like an A minus and a B minus and a C minus, right? And this thing is getting transferred over here, and what's being matched is an A plus and a B plus. It could just so happen that the recombination takes place right here. I'm going to make this red to show you guys. Right here. Okay? It doesn't always have to recombine from the beginning to end. 
but if it recombines after A+, plus, you're going to get a B switch with still an A-, minus. all right? So to transfer alleles, A+, plus has to be transferred if you're going to have B+, plus transferred as well, right? Same thing, if you want to transfer C over, you're going to get A and B, undoubtedly. But the recombination that takes place afterwards can be ambiguous because you can recombine after A plus and only get B plus recombined, or you might even just recombinate A and not get B. But the recombination is all based on chance. So it can happen that B plus gets switched over with the B minus. See the little arrow I drew? But A can be left outside. See, this guy's left outside. He's sad. Too bad. It's all about chance when it comes to recombination. Right? So the answers are, if you're going to have B plus allele transfer, you're going to have an A allele transfer as well. But not all B plus recombinants are A plus. Okay? The reason is, is because recombination, you do not know where they're going to pair and which one they're going to switch. All right, in my remaining time, I'm going to go over some of the... Ha, ah, here you go. And make this a little bigger. I'm going to go over some of the last lecture. Do you remember this? Yeah, I called this in class, didn't I? I made sure you guys remembered all the button sticky ends. But let's just go over some of the problems. I know some of you guys had some issues, but these are the most important problems. Make sure you know how to do all of these, make sure you know how to do all of them well, and you will do well on the test, guaranteed. Alright, so here we have mapping problem. The figure to the left shows this, 10 kilobases, okay? That means any of your answers should add up to 10 kilobases. So this, this is a little different. Okay, it should add up to 10 kilobases. Single cleavage as echo R1, ta-da, one right here, and uh, two BAM H1. BAM and BAM, right? They are located two kilobases to either side. So you guys can write down. I'm going to do that for you. See, look how nice I am. I'm going to fill this in for you. All right, so look, I'm going to put two here and two here. Make it a little bigger for you guys. All right, two, all right? If this plasmid is cut with BAM H1, what size bands will be observed on the gel? So if you cut with BAM H1, you're going to get a cut here and a cut here. What's going to be left? Well, all of this, which is 2 plus 2 equals, this is where, you know like Dora the Explorer when they ask a obligatory question and then the answer is, ex the audience is ex expected to respond? I want you guys talking to your computer. This is like interactive learning without you seeing me. All right, 2 plus 2 equals, this is when all the little kids say 5. All right, but, yeah, but it's uh, 2 plus 2 equals 4. And from here to here, 10 minus 4 is 6, right? So this is where you get 6 and 4. Um, if this plasmid is cut with echo R1, what size bands will be observed in the gel? Cut here. All right, so now I have to erase these guys. Yes, one here. Cut here. Oops, not deleting. Oh, there you go. All right, so now if we cut here, it's going to go all the way around. That means the size is going to be 10 kbs. Now, if you cut the plasmid with echo R1, cut here, and a 3 kb is inserted in here, so we're going to put a 3, so we're going to put a plus 3, and it does not contain any BAM H1 sites. If the new thing is cut with BAM H1, what's going to happen? Well, if you cut here, now that means we're going to cut with BAM H1 again. 1, 2. We're going to get a 2 plus 2 plus the 3 that we inserted. That's 2 plus 3 plus 2. What does that equal? Pause. 7. And over here, just like before, is 6. Right? That is how you do this problem. I am running out of time, but before I get cut off, I'm going to say, um, I'm going to do a quick video going over the rest of this slide. I will um, post a video response so you guys can find it quickly. Um, if you guys are liking this, please comment in my videos. I like suggestions. If you guys think my jokes are funny, if you guys think my jokes aren't funny, if you think I should stop joking around and be more serious, I would totally agree with you because I tend not to be serious. But let me know and um, stay tuned. Hang on a quick second and I will get the rest of the video uploaded shortly. Thank you.